How is it going, guys? Linux today back with another pros and cons. Today's pros and cons is about i3 window manager. This is running on a Manjaro distribution. So the only thing I really did to it is install it, update it, and install i3. So without all being said, let's get into the pros. Number one, it is quick and lightweight. If I do mod enter, terminal instantly opens. If I do um, close out of that with mod shift Q, instantly, instantly gone. I could type in a, uh, like let's go with LibreOffice. This one takes a little while because it, it has to load LibreOffice. Then like if you open a terminal, it's instantly right next to there. Really quick and really lightweight. So if you're running on like lower, lower hardware or an older computer, it's really perfect for it if you know how to use it. So that was pro number one. Pro number two, it, it helps productivity. So if you are a programmer, you have like a terminal and you need to go to Stack Overflow, not that, and like Firefox. And then I'll move that over there. You go to like, just go to Stack Overflow here. And let's say I'm working on a uh, program over here. And I'm just going to touch that. I don't have Vim installed. So. so let's just say you're working on like a program here. And you need like a debug right next to it, underneath it. Or like you need to run a. See how much resource uses if it's not creating like unending loops or something. You just have that running down there. And you can be like writing like your programs up here. Not like that's going to cause a loop or anything, but you get the point if you're writing a lot of scripts with loops or something. Switching to the windows is really easy. I'm just using mod and the arrow keys. So it's really quick, just helps productivity. It aligns the windows really nice. And then um you just get out of um get out of the top program and then I'm just gonna exit out of nano without saving. And then get out of there. It's just all really quick and easy. Helps productivity. Pro number three it is very configurable so in the terminal I'm used to Vim so nano is not really you go to dot config i3 and config so this is your configuration file I did a stream about like customizing it just a little bit I'm not very good at it but this is where it's all done you can do I've seen i3 uh, i3 desktops that are so customized it looks amazing but this is just bone stock i3 what i've got working with now but the only thing i did outside of like bone stock is install feth i forgot to bring that up in the beginning and it just added this line to give me my background so it's not just a blank background so i can do just the basic stuff but if you read the documentation and get really used to it you can make your i3 look amazing with um like compositors and all sorts of different stuff so like yeah if you want to like programs to start up you literally just do egg um exec exec and then like a program that you want and then save it then once you reload well you might have to get out and get back in or just taking a while but it should load, yep. So it's very configurable, i3 window manager. You can, uh, yeah, just install a whole bunch of, like, a lot of compositors and stuff to make the experience a lot better. So those are the pros. Now, given that there are pros, there's going to be cons. i3 window manager can't be perfect. Not all desktop environments are. So... Con number one, it is more difficult to learn than a normal desktop environment. So, 
to really learn it. How I learned it is I went to Firefox and I went to the documentation. I just Googled I3 Window Manager and then I forgot where to go. Yeah, right here. So I just read a lot down here, like the user's guide and all that. Like, I just read through this briefly and I got a brief understanding on how to use it. So if you read through this, it shouldn't be that bad. But if you didn't even know about this and you install i3 and you're greeted with just a blank screen with the bar on the bottom, no background it could be kind of a uh, kind of puzzling but that is i3 you probably want to configure it a lot more so that was con number one con number two is gaming on it isn't the best now it's kind of harder for me to demonstrate because i don't have steam or any games installed on here quite yet but from my understanding is if this is a game window and you have another window on the second screen. Um, what should we open? Let's say uh, LibreOffice is a game. And we have it on Workspace 2. A full screen game. Now this is just my, my um, experience with it. So we switched the uh, Workspace 1 to go check an email or something. And then we go back to Workspace 2, and all you see is just a black screen. It's not re, uh, it's not working right. So you have to exit out of the game and get back into it. And that's just what I've experienced. I don't know if it works on all games, because I don't have a lot of games in my library that are 100% compatible with Steam. Some games do work that way, actually. Like, um... Yeah, I, I forgot, but some games actually do work like that. But a lot of the full screen ones that I've come to use, when you switch workspaces back and forward, it doesn't like it too well. So that was con number one. I mean, uh, con number two, actually. Con number three... This is the questionable one because I was having a really hard time finding a third con. So, it is questionable, but it can be difficult to configure. If you're newer to Linux and you want to try out DE, this DE and um, just try to use it, and you're just switching to Linux, this is what I'm talking about. And... They tell you to open up the config, so, and you have no experience with uh, this kind of configuration, and you open this up, and you're like, what's going on here? So you have to watch a whole bunch of uh, videos on how to do it, and you get, let well, just simulate something, but then you type in something wrong. So I just typed in some random character so it'll flip out. Well, it didn't flip out, so. <laughs> I have a better idea. Let's take out the... You forgot the exec when you wanted to execute fe. I forgot how to get out of... Not that. Alright. So, you made an error... Then you want to show errors and you don't really know what's going on here. You get all this text up here. And you just start freaking out. And you really don't know what you're doing. It can be kind of hard to configure. Because you can type in one thing wrong and the whole thing hits the fan. So then you have to watch a bunch of videos on YouTube and read the documentation all day. Trying to figure out how to configure it so that was my pros and cons of the i3 window manager we'll briefly go over it once more pros pro number one it is quick and lightweight 
pearl number two, it helps productivity. And pearl number three, it is very configurable. Cons, con number one, it is harder to learn in a normal desktop environment. Con number two, gaming on it isn't the best. And then con number three, it is questionable, but it can be somewhat hard to configure. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a Linux distribution you want me to take a look at, please leave it down in the comments. I hope this video helped you decide if you wanted to use i3 Window Manager as your desktop environment.